before you can stay within. I, I have had an uh, Iraqi and an Indian guy who have been hired in my university and they, they were sent out after a couple of months. The people could not match up with them. Because these guys wanted to stick very, very close to their don't very stop. cultures and say, no, I don't want to take anything they need. Don't stop. So these are some of the tips that might be able to help us to be able to come through. The last point, do, you, do we actually know how to make a good application? Do we actually know how to make a good CV? Thank you, Mr. President, I mean, for organizing that workshop. Do you know what it means to make a good application and a good CV? A friend of mine, when we graduated, from Lund University. She was British. She made 800 applications for jobs and she didn't get it. But she was British here in, here in Scandinavia. And then to her, it was like, okay, she will never get a job. Then I sat down with her. We had a discussion on whatsoever. When she made her 821st application, she was accepted, called for an interview. And right now, she is a management consultant here in Denmark. Never give up, even with the 1,000 applications you have made, or 1,500 applications. Never give up. But if your approach is wrong and your strategy is wrong, ask for friends, ask for people who have succeeded. How can I be able to make a better cover letter that this company will find me attractive? How can I build a CV? I have a format for CV within the European Union. For those of you who might be interested to see this format, a CV that, I mean, is accepted generally within the very simplified. If you're interested, you can see. So the essence of this debate, I thank you, Mr. President and Moderator, the essence of this debate is that we share and see how we can be able to help each other to move on and to get a breakthrough in this system. The system has a lot to offer, but we are not making or taking advantage of the system at all. This system has a lot and a lot to offer. Go to the UK now, and if you are a European Union citizen, you are eligible to work in the UK. Please go to the UK now. You want to find a skilled job within the UK right now. It might take you two years, you will yeah. not get it. Sure. But in Denmark, it might take you six months and you will get it. Prove me wrong. Because the competition within the UK is higher than the competition we get here within Denmark. It's a small community. So let's try to take advantage of that. Thank you very much, Mr. Mudret. I'm sorry for that. Uh, is there some other person from the panel? Yeah. I, I think so. I'm, you know, yeah. we're not going to be so long, man. We want to ask something, so there's something to say. <laughs> I have to stop. We have to now reiterate, we should try to focus and have direction of our ambition. If we are staying in Denmark, we should focus on it because I think this is a problem. We should be focused. Most of us, edu particularly educated communities, are not focused because we, 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 we don't want to look for jobs. We don't want to waste our education, but we want, want to get the money through training. So you cannot get everything. You have to drop one thing and focus on one thing. Another thing again is short courses. Somebody mentioned, I think Dr. Olekose, you could take a short course of six months and we, we clean and make the money. You go to CBS, you look at something, you want to do something, you go to CBS and take a short course for six months, you pay 20,000 crowns, and that short course, you add it to your CV, is going to land you a job. I tell you, send out the next 500, 600 applications, you are getting a job. But you must do that short course to complement your education. These are things that we don't even look around for. So if you can be focused and we look for short courses that will orient us to career, I think you should have to go a long way to help. That's it. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Haka. Any other person from the panel? That, uh, we can start taking questions from the audience. Yeah, I just want to add to what Mr. Alois has said. I just want to bring out the point and say that the days themselves who are having the jobs, compared to the statistics Mr. Nikunze, Dr. Nikunze gave, uh, they don't have any qualifications higher than what you have. Most of the days, most of the times, we are refused from most of the jobs because we are overqualified by academic or, or skillful qualifications. We, 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 we are refused most of the time because we lack uh, the culture and the language. I would like to conclude on that note. So uh, if you have had a master degree and you have had one or, one or two uh, uh, certifications, please stop and start learning culture of the society. It will bring you a job very quickly. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Asama. Uh, uh, the panel is of the opinion that they have finished the submission they are supposed to make.
And it's time that we'll ask audience to put questions across. You do that by hand show. Then uh, you say to which member of the panel you want to address a question. Uh, Mr. Andre, yeah. I'm of the opinion that you want to say something about uh, what we as students can do so that our qualifications do not lose the mass of distinction. Do you have something to put across? I don't know if you have something, but I would like to speak in French. Yeah. Because it's my language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> D'abord, je vais dire merci eh, au président, au modérateur, à tous les participants. Eh, je pense que c'est le premier débat des Camerounais. Et c'est la première fois que j'assiste à un truc sérieux. Depuis 15 ans que je suis au Danemark. Je me rappelle, lorsque je suis arrivé ici 15 ans, et les gens qu'on avait, il n'y avait pas assez de Camerounais comme ça. Et c'était des vieux qu'on rencontrait. Et des gens qui ne faisaient que le cleaning. Même le cleaning, même pour avoir, on disait qu'il fallait parler le Danemark. Et jusqu'à présent. Et dans le temps, il n'y avait pas de Noirs même qui conduisaient le bus. Même le taxi. C'était tellement dur. Je veux dire quand même à nos jeunes frères. Et lorsque je suis arrivé ici, et Je suis arrivé ici pour travailler. Et je travaille. Non, non, c'est vrai, je vais, je vais terminer mes, mes études à l'ESSEC. À l'ESSEC, je vais. Et dès franchement, j'ai étudié une entreprise et puis on m'a envoyé sa mission. J'ai décidé de rester. Vous voyez, c'est tellement compliqué pour quelqu'un comme moi de réussir ici. Je crois que c'était facile. Il y avait l'Europe là qui tournait là, je crois que c'était facile. Mais ce n'était pas facile. Puisque mes camarades au Cameroun évoluaient, moi je crois que c'est ici où je, moi je devais évoluer, mais je faisais le cleaning. Et quand j'allais là-bas, ils étaient mariés, avec des enfants, avec des maisons. Et quand je suis allé, ça m'a donné l'idée. Heureusement, j'avais épousé, j'avais une chance que j'ai épousé quand même une juriste, la Kenneth Connors, mon ex-femme. Elle, elle me disait dans le temps, non mais va à l'école, va à l'école, va à l'école, laisse le, le clean, va à l'école, continue, va charger tes diplômes. Je disais, mais non, l'Afrique a besoin de moi, les, mes soeurs comme ça et tout et tout et tout. Il fallait aller chercher de l'argent. Il fallait aller faire le cleaning deux, trois jobs par jour, et puis je ne dormais pas et tout, et tout ça le stress. Je vous assure que ce n'était pas bon. Et vous avez tout dit. Je n'ai plus rien à ajouter. Mais ce que je vais dire à mes frères, c'est que tel que Aaron l'a dit, Kenneth l'a dit, et John Terry l'a dit, je vous assure que c'est ce que vous devez faire, vous, les jeunes frères. Vous avez intérêt. Le plus grand diplôme, le plus grand massacre que vous pouvez avoir ici, c'est l'intégration. Deux jours après, j'ai rencontré ce jeune homme-là que vous voyez là, il est là devant moi. J'ai rencontré un Camerounais qui m'a dit que je ne peux pas intégrer le Danemark. Je ne veux pas, et je ne vais pas le faire, mais je vais vivre dans ce pays. Il est là, il en est témoin. Et j'étais en train de travailler. C'est le moyen. Et, 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 je vais encore plus loin. Même étant diplômé, même étant diplômé, vous pouvez faire carrière dans le ring Pourquoi Ça dépend de votre ambition. Lorsque je suis arrivé ici, j'ai commencé par ISS. À ISS, c'était tellement ambitieux parce que je venais avec un background du pays. J'étais ambitieux et je voyais comment les gens évoluaient. Non, mes frères africains que j'avais trouvés, ils me disaient, non, tu ne vas pas faire, tu ne vas pas faire. Ils connaissent, je peux prendre un témoin, voilà Boniface, voilà Kenneth qui est là, qui, on se connaît depuis. Et c'est comme ça que j'ai continué à monter pour devenir inspecteur. Dans ISS. Mais dire, je pouvais avancer, 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 avancer. Ça dépendait de l'ambition. Et pour avancer, on ne peut pas avancer tant qu'on est ici à Moubéham, ni à Barcelone. <rire> non, 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 c'est vrai, c'est que je vais dans des termes un peu simples, mais c'est vrai. Je vais dire, ça va vous choquer un peu, mais c'est comme ça. Je vous dis sincèrement. Pour avancer, si vous êtes ici à Barcelone, allez à la commune. Vous allez rencontrer les dames. Et vous allez voir comment on mange le café, on boit le café que les Camerounais produisent. Nous, on, on ne boit pas le café alors qu'on produit. Et en enseignant avec les Danois, il va vous voir, il va dire, oh, mais les gars, oh, tu es gentil, hein? oh, tu es bon, hein? et comme ça. Et c'est après ça qu'ils vont vous accepter. Le fruit billet que vous dites là, les travaux là et tout et tout, je te jure que c'est un passage obligé. Si vous voulez devenir directeur, c'est un passage obligé. Et enlevez ça dans vos têtes. Vous n'allez pas avoir un master pour venir devenir directeur ici au Danemark. Ça ne va pas se passer comme ça. Il y a des étapes. 
Moi, je crois que le network, moi, j'ai... C'est vraiment un très très bon débat. Mais je suis seulement déçu que bon, les jeunes qui en ont besoin de ce débat, ils ne sont pas là. Les jeunes gars qui ont besoin de ça. Parce que moi, je n'en ai plus besoin. Moi, je n'en ai plus besoin. Mais ces jeunes-là qui finissent l'école et qui ont besoin de ça, ils ne sont pas là. Bon, mais pour nous, raison tout simple. Pourquoi Parce que, bon, ben, comme on voit, vous dites euh, de, en anglais que, bon, Rolling euh, euh, Rolling Sun Datas Lumus. C'est-à-dire, la pierre pour La moche pas de mousse. La plupart des jeunes qui sont ici, ils ont la tête à l'air. Ils finissent l'école, ils vont aller au Canada, ils vont aller aux États-Unis. Ils pensent que c'est bien la mieux avant que le Danemark. <rire> mais non, ce n'est pas mieux. Mais rassurez-vous, tel que Kanit l'a dit, mettez vos pieds ici. Si vous voulez faire carrière ici, il y a l'opportunité. Vous n'avez qu'à voir les jeunes, les jeunes gars qui sont là, les loups. Il dit qu'il y a l'opportunité ici. Et si vous marquez quelque chose, il y a des aînés qui sont ici, qui ont étudié comme vous, à qui vous pouvez vous demander conseil. Mais le véritable problème du Cameroun, c'est quoi Ils ne demandent pas, parce qu'on est trop intelligent. Demandez. Vous savez, l'école, c'est un passage. Ce n'est pas la fin. Les Camerounais croient peut-être qu'avec un masque, avec un PIG, ils disent que bon, on connaît tout. Je vous assure que non. Au Danemark, lorsqu'on forme les enfants, tel que mes, 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 mes... Alors, on a commencé à vous expliquer là. Mes enfants, vous, vous savez, quand je suis, je suis entré au Danemark, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé Bon, mais quand on parlait de mathématiques financières, je dis économie, bon, comme j'ai dit, non, je suis intelligent et tout et tout. tout. Je ne savais même pas utiliser la calculatrice. <rire> mais c'est bizarre, mais ça, ça fait tout, ils, ils manipulent tout. Et je pense qu'ils étaient bêtes, mais c'est les plus intelligents. Parce qu'eux, ils sont formés pour une seule matière. Quand il est bon sur les mathématiques, il est bon sur les mathématiques. Tu ne parles pas la géographie, que non, ce n'est pas mon problème, je ne connais pas. Mais le Camerounais, c'est tout. Et le fait qu'on on sait tout. Déjà, on est embrouillé, on ne peut rien faire. Moi, je crois qu'il est temps. C'est un très, très bon débat. Et le Cameroun, le Cameroun est insignifiant, s'il vous plaît. Je crois que par la carte, par ce genre de, 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 Montrez-nous de quoi vous êtes capable. Les masters que vous avez, c'est le moment maintenant. <rire> Merci. Merci beaucoup, M. André. Il faut qu'on prenne une autre question, euh, je crois, de la part de M. Oh, les scholars. I really greet you. And uh, I'm really happy with this uh, specific uh, you know, uh, assignment that ACAT is doing. And uh, if this one, if we continue in this mood, then most of us will change our destiny in a day. I also want to say something from uh, the doctor because he has, if I'm going back today, then I'm going back with the back of reforms, the back of injections the back of you know breakthrough and everything a word of you really uh, I don't really have a question but I want just to put some stress to from certain points that we have also we have already said that has to be emphasized the issue of networking very very pertinent because I take myself as an example I'm, I'm just two and a half months here but I'm capable of exploring my day to do two voluntary jobs, one with the UN, uh, UNICEF, and one with uh, other uh, social organizations that are based on here. Please, can we clap for that? Please. I'm only working at night, three hours. I'm, I'm just taking 6,000 a month. And I know what I'm doing. Because with this networking, these guys are telling me that you create relationship, you create a lot of discussion, you take coffee. <laughs> and, uh, it gives you a lot of you know ability to know people to know you better. It's the same as you meet a Danish girl today and say I love you. Say how do you know me? <laughs> <laughs> and one point I want to emphasize here is that some of us are still students, and we need to go in for internships. If you go in for internship with now I went I went through this evening and I saw internship with United Nations, a lot of internship, and they are only ask, they are only looking for students who are who are still who are, you are looking for people who are still students. If you apply for internship for three months, where I was with them in, in Belgium, I had a friend who applied internship with with the uh, with UN for three months and then he was attained to work there. So we should really involve ourselves ourselves with internship networking. We don't make ourselves, you know, overstressed without even going to cafes. We have to go to cafes too here. 
The way you go to cafes, you meet people there, you discuss their problems, and they give you a lot of networking. So my question, or my my question is, or what we have to take home? Is not the question cannot be answered here. How, what do we do to turn things around, as the moderator was saying? No matter all what we can do here today. If these issues we don't take it personally in our minds and put it in practice, then the questions cannot be solved. I was also happy with the intention, with the, with the, with your own, uh, uh, you know. I was asking my sister every time, how, where can I have, a, you know, a, a union? Because I know the importance of a union too. How can I have a union to enter there and you know make contribution? But what is killing us is that we pay a lot of money. Say, oh, I would not be paying 900 uh, uh, kronas every month when I am only having 2,000. And some of the points, again, as an anthropologist, what we have to study is a culture. And that there are certain times, as an economist, to do what we call opportunity cost. Either by foregoing all the stresses back home and paying us uh, crash courses in order that we attain what we want to do, like our brothers who are going to the United States with the, with the green card. When they come there, they have, done, they have masters, they have uh, uh, bachelors and everything. They put it down and start doing, uh, you know, nursing. Yes. Nursing. <laughs> nursing. Why don't we do it here? Why don't we study the yeah. and do the nursing there? Yeah. And change our fields. Therefore, I will go directly to what uh, the doctor was saying about the areas where we lack, where we, they need jobs, they need, they need uh, jobs here. And all of us, the scholars here, some of us have this, have a diplomas and a degrees in this particular field. Why don't we offer ourselves to do voluntary jobs there? In order that after six months they can take you instead of taking somebody outside. And we should also be afraid that the pillow we are using for, for, for cleaning here, for two years, when we want to present a CV, no those two years will be questionable. No questionable and would not be able to compensate those two courses when we are looking for a job. But volunteer work will help a lot. So, uh, really, uh, my question is, I would allow other people to say, but I want to ask a question again. Uh, good evening to all, and uh, my regards to the panel. I mean, it's been great. Um, I don't really have questions, but uh, I have a couple of remarks to make. Um, We've been talking all evening about integration and, uh, I mean, you are not integrated. You are given an opportunity to integrate yourself. And the question here is whether the, 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 the Danes have given us that opportunity. And I want to believe they have. Because, uh, like, we have brothers and maybe some sisters that are, in the, I mean, inside the system, like Kenneth, like Doctor, and, and all the rest. That is proof that we have been given that opportunity. There is one issue that I've noticed with us Africans. We complain a lot. I mean, it's my personal conviction. We complain a lot. Uh, the opportunity is there. It is left to us. To do what it takes to get integrated into the system. You cannot sit back and wait for the beans to integrate you. It cannot happen. You have to integrate yourself. The opportunity is there. You have to go the extra mile. We talk here about uh, applications and so on and so forth. That I mean, if you finish school and you're looking for a job, it's true. It's if you are really looking for a job, it's a full-time job. Job searching is a full-time job. Don't compare yourself with the Danes because they have something extra that you don't. So you have to go the extra mile to be a child with them. If the Dane is sending out 1,500 applications, you have to go for two or three to be at par with them. But the bottom line is you have to be quick. You might you can send out as many applications as you want. You can send out 10,000 a year. If you are not a pit, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you send out a hundred or ten thousand. Uh, when you're a fisherman, you need a net, and for that net to be efficient, 
it has to have no home. <laughs> Meaning, if you are a job seeker, you have to be well equipped. Like the, the circle, uh, you made two circles. You have to be in that inner circle to be able to succeed. You have to know, the, I mean, the general culture of your environment and the corporate culture of that environment in which you are trying to enter into, I mean, and enter into. Uh, having had that, you have to go out and fish. A fisherman with a good net, if you stay at the shore, that net won't give you any fish. You have to get out there in the sea and fish to be able to catch any fish. There at the shore, you won't have anything. So what I'm just trying to say is that uh, instead of sitting back and saying uh, they are not integrating us and so on and so forth, challenge them. Integrate yourself. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm better. All of us, there are times to say, okay, uh, I've sent out a thousand applications. I don't have a job. Uh, nobody wants me. I think that's a bad ideology. Anytime when I get to that stage, I always, I mean, recall the person who came up originally with this slide that we enjoyed today, Thomas Edison. He tried over 10,000 times. If you can imagine that, that's somebody. I mean, it's not like light was already, I mean, electric light was already existing. That he could say, uh, that he could, I mean, derive from. Out of nothing, he was trying. He said, it's possible to use electrical energy to create light. He was trying, he was trying. He started, he tried the first, the second, the hundredth time, he did not succeed. But he was convicted that it is possible. He tried over 10,000 times and he succeeded. I mean, if you can put that at the back of your mind and use it as the base with which you struggle, I think you are going to be su successful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. It's really been a, an enriching debate, uh, panel discussion. So knowledgeable and I'm so filled. It's like my brain has to explode with so much knowledge I've had today. Thank you so very much, the panel, the people, the panel members, our moderator, Dr. <coughs> Ranson and everyone. Um, <clears throat> there's something I've observed here, and that is what I observed when I came to Denmark initially. When I came to Denmark initially, I meet everyone. They say, are you close to Cameroonians? They say, not really. Oh, it's good. Cameroonians talk a lot. Cameroonians talk a lot. So everyone claims to be the nice guy. <laughs> Cameroonians talk a lot. When I met the fourth person, Cameroonians talk. Are you not a Cameroonian? They talk a lot. So it means you two talk a lot. Because every Cameroonian talks a lot. So what I've observed here is like all of us are advising ourselves. All of us are all of us are being the nice people here. Everyone gets up. It's true. We say, do this, do this, do this. So it's like all of us are so nice. We know the system. We are advising each other. And I want, to accept, I, I want us to try to look into it that there are some challenges too that we face in the Danish society, as well as some impediments. There were two scenarios. Mr. Terence talked about some impediments we are having getting into the Danish society. Mr. Uh, Chickenet said those impediments could be translated to challenges. Can we look at some of those ways we can translate these challenges, sorry, these impediments to challenges? Because if all of us say, let's look for jobs, how many applications have you, have you made? Um, it's like all of us are the nice people and we're advising for ourselves. It's like those people who say Cameroonians talk a lot and we don't know the Cameroonians who talks a lot. So can we come up with something? How will we challenge even these impediments we face in Denmark? For example, doctor presented being self-employed or self-employment ventures. Maybe if there is an impediment somewhere, as Cameroonians, we can still come up with other ways to make ourselves employed in those skills. For example, I'm just saying this like, I was called uh, three days ago by a Cameroonian in Sweden, and he said they have just opened a bank 
in back home in, in Cameroon. So they are looking for investors. They, are, they, they want to come. They are thinking of coming over to Denmark to have a seminar with us and talk about this bank, this venture of a bank. And I think if we invest in things like that, if it's genuine, normally we have to assess the genuity of any business venture. If it's genuine, we, we, we get into things like that. Then we will not only depend on wanting to have jobs from the Danes themselves. We ourselves can create jobs for ourselves. We can sit together and come up with initiatives, just like um, what Mr. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so even though I, I want to believe that there are these impediments, but we can use these impediments as challenges and sit together like Cameroonians and say, okay, Denmark has blocked us this way. Can we go another way round? and still make ourselves employed, use our, our, our talent, our uh, yeah, economic talent, uh, whatever talent, just like Cameroonians, and still be a skilled person in Denmark. You must not be employed only in a Danish office before you are called a skilled person. Can Cameroonians not have businesses? Can Cameroonians not, uh, not have banks, cooperative unions, and things like that? So that is what I'm posing here. So all of us should not just be the nice guy and advise ourselves we have to do this and we go back and sleep. Can we think of how to break some of these impediments which I believe they are real in the Danish society as well? Thank you. Mr. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Joe Leonga. Um, that was a very good uh, thing you, you asked. Well, actually, um, us as Cameroonians in, in living in Denmark, we we are not different from any other foreigners living in Denmark. We 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 have we have the tools. We have the educational tools. Most of us have the educational tools. I'll come back again to my point that what I find as the as, as the imped, as one of the greatest impediments that we can all take it to be a challenge. A challenge, to my own point of view, means something which is solvable. Um, is that most of us are not integrated and even if we want to create businesses in Denmark we are only thinking about businesses that has to to deal to do with something back home and not don't have an impact on this society now um, the Danish the Danish system which got, which uh, with, with regards to opening companies that's owning companies um, it's so open, even to foreigners who have the legal right to live in Denmark. Recently, because of the economic crisis, um, uh, people, individuals who live in Denmark are given opportunities to come up with ideas and write business plans. We are not limited by that. So the, 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 another point of looking at it with us Cameroonians is that we should start thinking of thinking of how to create something to create a product that can go into the market a product in terms can be a good or can be a service that you can render into this society for example mr terence they are creating a consultancy that is a pro that is a service they are rendering to this society if they make a very good business plan if you are if you are not very versed with that area i can also chip in some 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 help um, you, you have the right to, 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 to approach investors which are divided within the, the counties in the, in the whole of Denmark. And at this time of economic crisis, the system is pumping a lot of emphasis on individuals coming up with ideas and approaching the system with very good business plan. And a lot of guys are gaining these opportunities. Um, those who gain these opportunities are those foreigners who have finished their education either in Denmark or outside Europe and have come into the system, have integrated themselves and they can write a good business plan and show that they can speak the language into the system and create a business. Even when you create a business and it is very lucrative and you don't have um, 
the Danish language skills, the commune still has programs for newly created businesses, Mr. Kenneth, and that they can train the individuals who have these ideas. In a very short time, they will find teachers who will train you people. It's free. So that this idea can flow in the system. So um, the point, again, I will still repeat, is that we should not limit ourselves. We should start creating, thinking of how to create business. We should not only think that we will send an application to a company and have a job. And we should not be thinking only businesses that we will implement it in Cameroon. Because if you write a business plan and it's a business that you will sell something in Cameroon or do something in Cameroon, no investor in Europe will invest in that business plan. None of them. I'll give an example. I, for one, I made a business plan, a very good business plan, and they had to cut off, they had to cut off everything that has to do with outside Denmark and ask me to go and re re uh, uh, make it nice so that it should reflect the Danish society. If the company succeeds in Denmark, then it can go somewhere else outside. That is when Danish investors have to put their money. But this issue about creating a company and everything, I would like us to take it as, as, another, as, as another debate topic some, some other time. It's a very huge topic and it will, it will create a lot of opportunity for Cameroonians who wants to be as intra entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial skills. They are entrepreneurial courses. Recently, Copenhagen Community has started giving entrepreneurial courses in, in Danish. We can also take and it's free. So um, this is another whole topic that we can take. This is the way that I think we can solve uh, some of these issues and turn uh, 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 impediments into challenges which are solvable. Thank you. Okay, um, I would just have to make some few points. Um, first of all, I would like to turn to ACAD. Um, I very much appreciate the fact that ACAD organized um, something like a seminar to see how people can be, people can learn on how to write a CV in Denmark. But um, I would also like to suggest that if ACAD can somehow come up with a structure of what they learned that day in that seminar. Of That's how been sent online. That's been sent online. Yeah, okay, long I didn't time. see it. It was sent a long time. Okay, I didn't see it. Everything was sent. Okay, I wanted to suggest that you send it online because I've seen many messages from ACAD. I haven't seen that. Maybe I'll check it. Um, secondly, we were talking of qualifications. I just want to add some qualifications to work in Denmark. And from my own experience, I've seen that many of us who are in Denmark, we have about two, three master degrees. But we consider these, these degrees as an end. In the sense that we feel that because we have master degree, we are fully qualified to get a job in Denmark. We have to very much accept the fact that Denmark is a small country. It's not a very big country where we have many multinational companies. So if you have your degree, a master degree, we have to consider that that degree is, does not qualify you completely to get a job in Denmark. There are many requirements also adding to that degree, like the language which we have deliberated lengthy years. So, most of us will just believe that, okay, we we'll have a master degree, okay, if you, if you apply for a job and you don't give you a job, I'm very qualified, but they don't, they don't consider only the degree as a requirement to give you an employment. Then secondly, um, in fact, there are many terms used here about um, the culture. I think, he said, um, the culture is like an impediment. And one other member of the panel said, uh, it is like a challenge. But maybe I would say that we shouldn't really look at it as an impediment, as a challenge, because those two terms are very frightening. Because it is true. If we observe critically on how the Danish culture is, it is like we are afraid of it. Like it is a very big challenge that is it's very difficult to pass through. 
But if we conceptualize it, that it is a, a very big challenge, then we will fail in the long run. Not even the long run, the short run. So in this sense, we have to look at this culture as a requirement for us to sail through in order to improve on either to get a job on our, on, 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 on our, our situations in Denmark. We should not look at it as a very big challenge because it is true. Personally, I look at it as a challenge. And many people look at it as a challenge, as something that it is difficult to break through. Doctor used the term, we should try to break through, break through. And we should try to break through. It's very necessary. Then the last thing I would like to highlight a bit is on the issue that doctor said of the loan that we are trying to get. It is true. If you look at the European society, specifically on the Eurozone, you will see that Europe is passing, if you are the Eurozone area, they are passing through financial crisis. If you look at Greece, if you look at Portugal, if you look at recently Italy, they are passing through financial crisis. And Denmark is not really an exception. If you look at the Spanish report or the growth report of 2008, you will see that European countries are trying to encourage savings. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't doubt to say that in two or three years, things will be more difficult than like you want to go and take a loan. Because recently countries, they are, they, are, they are trying to pass, they are trying to introduce tough austerity measures to say that they should, they should be able to meet up in, in years ahead. So we should, we should try to understand those things as well, that things might be difficult in terms of getting a loan because they feel that if they save now more than what they did in the past, they can have a better society in the future. So without much ado, I think those are the few contributions that I want to Yes, good evening everyone. First of all, I wish to appreciate the dexterity in which the gentlemen in the panel have uh, used to really go around playing with the topic we have here tonight. I have just one question. Uh, some of us seated here have uh, break through the system or are kind of in the system. So I wish to find out there are certain uh, careers or skilled jobs that you need to get a Danish authorization to practice like an MD or a special education teacher or a teacher in a primary or a secondary school. So I wish to find out if any of those guys who are breaking through the system know how to go about getting a Danish uh, authorization to practice a career which requires uh, obtaining an authorization from the Danish government to practice in Denmark. Thank you. You need a Danish authorization to practice that if you are coming from outside with a degree. A lawyer, yeah. Or a teacher. I think, I think like a, medi a medical doctor, when you come, of course, you have to register in the union of the doctors. And there is a, a procedure before you get your license. It's, it's all about studying you in the process to see if you have all the ethical norms to be a doctor. And language is always a problem and that's why you have to, like a doctor have to go to language and it's a gradual process and you take a long time for you to acquire your license like a doctor in the other, other professional accountant i don't know exactly but with doctors i have a contact with that i know it's a procedure and it's very easy it's not it's not an impossibility where do you go to get that to the commune or yeah to the... yeah, yeah. this this pro centers they have all the information for all the different career lines yeah excuse you... me please uh, in case of a green card you don't you, re, you require to show the authorization before you come to them. It's not a case of being in them. If you are required to show an authorization that you have been granted this authorization to practice in them as a lawyer before you are granted a green card. That's a, no. that's a different that's a different oh, good evening everyone. It's been uh, quite nice. I hear you all for what has been going on. Um, everybody sounds like we can make, we can always make stepping stones out of stumbling blocks. Yeah, everybody is positive. I have just one question. Uh, how there is this issue of, uh, you know, getting jobs in Denmark, and then there is a clause that they always put in some jobs. They say being that some jobs are advertised, and it's like you must be an EU citizen to apply for this job. 
So this is a natural hindrance. So how do we make a stepping stone here? Let me see. This is something it's like we are blocked by virtue of what we look like, where we come from. So how do we break through here? <laughs> Thank you. I I read through the theory that is called the dual labor theory. This is a theory propounded by you know social anthropologists. They've carried on serious research, and uh, this is evident everywhere. Like I said before, before talking about impediments, I was answering the question as to whether this country has some structures that are making it difficult for us to integrate. Yes, of course, every community has its own way of creating. Every community has things they want to associate to their people. So this dual labor theory explains labor segmentation. In other words, labor discrimination. I think it's on that note that the EU, without or with alacrity, will state clearly, you must be an EU citizen to be able to get this job here. Of course, international law backs that. But to come back to the dual labor theory, it explains explicitly that in a labor market situation, there are jobs that have security. There are jobs within which an individual can advance. Because uh, as we close it officially now, we will still be around, and panel members can take the questions at a personal level, informally. We would like to very much thank Akkad, who have uh, spearheaded this uh, panel discussion. We thank the distinguished members of the panel. It has been a big, a big, big input that they have made to uh, this dispensation that we have. As we go home, we should remember that it is not impossible to have skills or academic related jobs in Denmark. We accept that it's certainly difficult. We also recognize that there are things to be done which could help to turn things around. Learn Danish. Connect to informal networks. Start with volunteer positions. Have plan A and plan B and possible plan C. We're not going to Canada. Remember, these are, the, these are the main points. As we go home, remember to carry these points. It is possible. Cameroonians are winners. And we have to remain winners. On behalf of all of you, we say thank you for your concern. Remember that it's the first ACAD debate. It's not the end. Okay. It will become a, a regular feature. This will become a regular feature of ACAD activities. And uh, there's another one planned one more time to come. So please, we we'll invite sponsors for ACAD debate. We invite panelists for future debates. We invite moderators. One more time, thank you all.